You know, when you're working on classic cars, they don't always have, you know, custom set made uh, battery cables for them, or you wish to, you know, maybe reloc, you know, in performance cars, it's a common thing to relocate the battery to the trunk. You get, move all that weight all the way back to over your rear axle so you can get better traction. And uh, so there's a number of reasons why you may need to build your own battery cables. You know, uh, you can get, you know, the, this is about the heaviest you'll use in automotive is a two watt wire. You know, you'll use this if you're putting, you know, your battery way back in the trunk because you'll need, you know, the extra size to cover the distance from your starter to, you know, your batteries. So you need a good heavy wire. But putting terminals on wires like this can be a challenge. You know, you could go in and cut this cable and solder this on. I don't like soldering them on so much because what happens is you have to, to get a good bond with your cable, you have to put so much heat to this that you end up, you know, melting back your insulation some. So we're going to look at the process to uh, cut the wire and then crimp a new terminal on here using a lug crimper. Uh, to start, we're going to use just a, a heavy duty cable cutter. And, you know, you could cut this with a, you know, if you've ever tried it with a hacksaw, you can cut it with a hacksaw or, or a chop saw or anything else. But, you know, the cable cutter really makes short work of, of cutting copper cable. And it does a nice job at the same time. So you get a nice clean cut quickly and easy without a lot of hassle. Once the uh, cable is cut, you know, we need to strip back this insulation. And we need to strip it back, you know, about, you know, half inch or so. So just grab, you know, we'll just grab our pocket knife here and just kind of follow it around, make a, make a cut in the sheathing without, you know, wrestling this, wrestling this heavy cable can be a little bit of a challenge, but it, uh, It's nothing that you can't expect. Then after you make the cut all the way around, you can just kind of cut it up. You really want to make sure you get a good cut all the way around on this insulation. It, it's got good heavy insulation on it. Okay, now that we've got our cable exposed, we're ready to you know, put our end on here. And this type of lug crimper is uh, you know this is, this is one type of lug crimper. There's probably you know several different kinds. Some you know actually use a couple of dies that press in from both sides. This is uh, this is what I call a dimple crimper because it has a V shape on one end, and then a, a dimpler that comes in and presses this into the the housing itself. So the best way I've found to do this is just kind of set it up. I always put the uh, the dimple on the bottom side. You can see where the lug is is uh, uh, kind of positioned. So this would be the top where you'd bolt this up against something, and the the dimple itself would be in the bottom. Insert the cable. Make sure you have it in there good. And just a matter of pressing down on a lever. And this one is adjustable, so we've already set it up for this size connector. And you can see where it's actually forced this in. We have a good solid connection now. So we know this cable has a good connection. The last thing I like to do is put a piece of shrink tube on here. What this does is this helps seal this up so I don't have to worry about getting any moisture in here.
and there's the completed cable. As you can see, with the right tools, we can uh, put an end on a battery cable, have a solid watertight connection in just a matter of minutes.